everyone. How are you guys? Yay, I'm on here live. Oh, what a day. Um, so my name is Brandy. I am with Brushed by Brandy. Um, I am a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima, and I'm here today to show you guys some of their newest transfer collection that just came out this last week. Um, I'm actually going to work with a piece here on this uh, furniture piece that I'm working on. Um, and let me show you a little bit about what I'm working on in just a second. So my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. You can go follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. I see you guys popping on. Say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, and I am a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company and also redesigned for you. Hi, Gina. Yay. Thank you. Um, also, let me know if you guys can see and hear me okay as we go through. Um, so the transfer that I'm going to work with today is this one here. And I'm going to try to hold it up, but it's three separate pieces. It's going to be the flower collector transfer. And I like this one. I'm actually going to cut this up a little bit. Hi, Roz. Hi, Joe. I'm going to cut this up a little bit. And this piece that I'm working on here kind of has a frame of molding around it. Um, this side I've accentuated so you can see it a little bit. I've accentuated with a little bit of gilding waxes and shaded it with some black wax. So this side, you can see it a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing to this side, but I actually wanted to show you the differences in what the gilding waxes do to the look of this piece. Um, so then I'm going to cut up this flower collector transfer. We're going to do that on camera today. And I'm going to use this frame here to frame out this gold lettering on this transfer. And I think the gold is going to be really pretty up against this rich kind of a, I'm going to call it a, a, a thyme, like a um, dried, like a sagey thyme color, uh, T-H-Y-M-E. Um, and I told everybody on my page that if you guys came on, I would tell you what this color mix is. This is a custom color mix of Dixie Belle paint. And I mixed it using, you guys ready? I got some really good guesses. You guys were breaking down the color pretty smart and I loved it. Um, but let me show you what I actually used to mix this color. So this piece has four colors on it. And what I used to mix the color, nobody guessed any of them actually, was um, my main color I started with was collard greens. Collard greens. Can you guys see it in there? If I hold it up next to the piece, can you guys see the color in there? So I started with some collard greens. Um, I did about two parts of that, and then I added one part of the gulf. Can you guys see that in there now? Um, so it's got some of the gulf in there. That lightened it up and brought some of the blues in. And then to make it even more blue, I added antebellum blue. So these three colors, it's kind of cool to see them up against the color in the background, because then you can kind of pull them out, each one, and see how it is in there. But those are my three colors I mixed, collard greens, the Gulf, Antebellum Blue. I did about two parts collard greens and then one part Antebellum, one part um, the Gulf. And then my highlight in the center here is Dixie Belle Dried Sage. So I just used the dried sage to kind of lighten it up and give me a highlight. You like my mix? Thank you, I love it too. I, it's so rich and beautiful and this is like a French buffet. Try to get you guys a wide shot of it. It's got um, French provincial legs on it, but it's very French. And so I just thought that was a really good color. Oh, yay. I see all the hearts. Thanks, guys. Um, all right. So let's talk about cutting transfers up. And then I'm going to show you how, um, how I cut them up when I'm putting them on a piece. So on this one here, you'll notice I've got this divide in the door. And I'm going to show you guys how I cut a transfer up when I'm working, whether it's around a drawer frame or in this case, the doors, um, and then how I'm gonna take this transfer apart and just use the pieces that I want. Now, what I'm really after is I want this curvy part down here. I want that. It extends onto this second piece. It's a three-piece transfer, so I want this piece here. This is just kind of just regular, straight across script. I'm actually gonna eliminate this part. And then if I come down to the third piece, it's got some more of this on the bottom here. I'm going to take this piece. Um, the reason I'm cutting it up is because I can't fit it all on here. It's too big. So let's start with my first piece. 
We're gonna take some scissors to it. And I think this is nerve wracking to take scissors to a transfer. A kiss of Brazil, yay. Australia, oh my gosh, you guys. Um, I put a link above in the post to redesignwithprima.com and that is where you can find your local retailer, where you can find this new release of transfers. It's 10 transfers that just came out last Friday and this is one of them that I'm using today. So it has, this is, um, the flower collector transfer is like a vintage magazine cover is what I would say it, it probably is meant to duplicate. So when I'm cutting a transfer apart, I don't ever wanna take apart script that would make my transfer not make sense anymore. So I try to pay attention to what they say, what are they trying to say, and what can I eliminate if I need to cut it apart to make it smaller. So in this case, one of them, it's got a name, Curtis's Botanical Magazine. I'm gonna take the Curtis's off because it makes my transfer too large. I need it to fit around this molding here. And if I take that out of the top, look what it does, it makes it fit. So then I can kind of get an idea for my placement just by taking, I've only taken that one piece off. Okay, I think I might want this to go up even higher. I want it to snug right in around this molding. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I can adjust the spacing of my words on a transfer. So I'm gonna cut out this next line of wording here. Just a straight line across. And here's what I figure when I'm cutting a transfer apart. I've, I've so far made three pieces of this one sheet and it's intimidating because what am I gonna do if I don't like it? Here's what I figure. I can always piece it back together. Hi, Cindy. I can always piece it back together. So see what that did? Now I can cut these two words apart. They say botanical magazine and I can snug them right up to the top as far as I can go here and I can spread them out. See, it, when they were together, the spacing was like this and I was kind of stuck. This lets me spread these words out so I can get them exactly where I want to be. So I'm gonna do these first. And I'm going to come to the other side of my piece because I'm going to put this word on first. Okay, so this is the word botanical. And I'm going to trim some of this excess just because I don't have a lot of space and I want to be able to place this without this plastic in my way. Now the transfer comes in two pieces. My actual letters are on a clear face. That's my transfer sheet. And then I've got this white backing. I'm going to go ahead and separate them. Now I've got this word here, and once I stick this, it's gonna be stuck on whatever surface I attach it to. So you wanna be careful once you remove that backing um, that when you stick it, it's right where you want it. So now I can see through this backing and I can get this right up as close as I can. I can move it side to side if I want. I can get it right up as close as I can to where I want it to go. And I feel like I'm kind of right here. So now I'm gonna commit. It looks straight to me. So it looks straight to you guys. That's always my fear is that, that I'm gonna put it on and it's gonna be like Meh. And then now I can rub this one word on. So don't ever feel like you are committed to whatever, oh, I just broke my stick. I think it might've already been broken in my defense. I'm actually using the transfer tool that, or the transfer stick that comes in the package with the transfer. This is unsealed paint. So this is two coats of my paint and I'm rubbing my transfer directly onto the paint. So this is just one word I've cut out so far. I'm gonna piece this transfer together inside this frame here. And I'm gonna make it look very custom by making the spacing fit. So then once I feel like I've got it good and attached, I rub, rubbed over the whole thing, I will start peeling it back. And as I'm going, I'm rubbing and I'm watching. And I'm watching to see sometimes the edge of a letter, like this little A right here, needs a little rub. So instead of just rubbing at it, you know, all over the place. I'm Now I can focus on where does it need to be rubbed instead of just going to town on it. Okay. All 
All right, and now I can take that, um, gosh, am I a little crooked or is that just my camera angle? I think it might just be my phone. Yeah, here, we'll turn my phone like this. That looks better, huh? I'm kidding. I think it's okay. I think it's just my camera angle. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over to the other side and we're gonna do the second word. Same thing, I'm gonna cut around this lettering here. I'm gonna actually do that. I'm gonna put the backing sheet back on it. And then I can cut around it and I don't have to worry about accidentally sticking it somewhere. Why is it back to front? Because I'm in selfie mode on my camera, because I'm recording my own live video, you can flip it around, but I'm not. It's not um, to make the wording right. So it looks backwards to you guys. It is correct to me. You guys are backwards, I'm not. Okay, now I'm gonna to try to make sure this one's kind of straight, kind of matches up with where the other one is. I'm gonna evenly place it off this center medallion. Right there, I kind of like. See, and once I press it down, that's kind of where I commit because if I was to try to pull that back up now, it's going to be at least a little bit stuck to my furniture piece, but that's enough to hold it in place for me. I just lost my wood tool, so we're going to use the transfer tool. When I'm doing smaller pieces of transfer, I actually like the little wood tool better because it's smaller. This is a, has a little bit of a big edge on it. This is really nice for the big transfers, the six piece ones that cover the full front of a piece. I like the big transfer tool for. It's a little big for this little tiny word that I'm doing. All right, so I've rubbed over it all. Now I'm going to pull it back slowly, paying attention to my edges as I go. Now I'm gonna get all this on and then I'm gonna come back and I'll clean it up by rubbing over it with my finger and I'll show you guys that what th that does up close. But right now I'm just trying to get it on and attach to my piece. Hang on, I'm gonna find that wood tool because I set it down somewhere and that one's just a little too big. Here it is behind me. Hi April. Is it true you can seal transfers with an oil-based wax too? Yes, you absolutely can use your waxes over transfer. You can. Um, the only sealant that you probably want to be a little bit careful with is Dixie Bell Gator Hide. And the reason is because if there is any air bubbles under your transfer whatsoever, even if you think that you've gone over it really well, um, it's a liquid and liquid will find um, places where it can get underneath. Think of if you have, you know, a water leak in your house, that water leak is going to find anywhere that it can. Did I do good? It looks okay. I think it looks pretty even. Um, Water will find any place it can to get underneath. So um, if gator hide gets underneath the transfer, it can start, it can cause lifting. Um, and so I recommend that you put a coat of Dixie Bell Satin Clear underneath if you want to use gator hide. And that way you don't even have to worry about it. Someone beat you to the wax question. Yeah, you absolutely can use your waxes with... Um, Oh, you know what? This is a four piece transfer. So I'm gonna probably have a good half this transfer left once I'm done. So now I can come back and put this next piece on here. Now, same thing with this. If I wanna move it up or down, I can control the spacing of these words. So I could choose if I wanted to cut this off and move this spacing up a little bit, I could eliminate this space. See how wide this, there's a lot of white right here. So that's totally up to you. You can really personalize it. I'm um, trying, to, trying to lay this out mentally and see where I'm gonna land if I use all the pieces I want, if I have enough space or if I need to take out that. Um, oh no, it is a three-piece transfer. What was I thinking? Three-piece. This does have a bowed front. Great question. It does have a bowed front. It's a beautiful piece of furniture. I actually do think I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this white out. So what I'm showing you is it's got a lot, a lot of spacing here. And I'm trying, I wanna fit this in a, the space on the front of this piece where I'm working in. And so that could kind of eliminate some of my transfer space. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this next line out too. 
So I'm just using my scissors. And now I can take this, take it off the backing, and I'm gonna let it go over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the words right up underneath. And I apologize, I'm probably blocking you guys with my head. But I wanna get this right up underneath. And center it. I like that location. And I, I made these words closer together than they would. Thank you. So I'm gonna show you on my paint here. This side is where I've done more work. So I've done a lot more shading with my waxes. Um, some gilding waxes up here on this molding. It's kind of a wave design, which is really cool. And then over here, I haven't gotten to that step yet. So you can see where the paint started. This is just my paint on this side. And this is the paint with the waxes on this side. It just gives it more depth. Your makeup looks pretty. Thank you, Stacy. Can I tell you guys a secret? Can I tell you guys a secret? Um, I'm wearing fake eyelashes for the first time. I've worn them at my sister's wedding. So you do I look crazy? But I've never really worn fake eyelashes. And Kristana talked me into trying these fake eyelashes. So I, after two tries, I got them on today. And I went and showed Sean, because I'm not sure it either looks like really pretty or do I look like a drag queen? I don't know. Yeah, I love this piece of furniture. I've held on to this piece of furniture for like a year and I thought somebody would snatch it up and nobody did. So guess what? Now I get to play with it. But I feel like it's very classic and pretty and I don't want to take away from the piece. So I'm actually just doing a really, um, you know, kind of simple, classic finish on it. So see how I'm rubbing and I'm going to pull back my transfer at the same time. And that way I can see if there's areas that aren't attached. Make sure each individual letter gets a little bit of attention. There's some smaller letters up here at the top. I wanna to make sure those are nice and rubbed on. Now for this one, I didn't cut this apart. I didn't cut it at the door because it's just gonna go straight across. But sometimes I do cut it down the lines because it's easier to cut the transfer while it's on the clear backing than it is to cut it once it's laid, if that makes sense. All right, so we got that part on. Stacy, you are a professional. You do beautiful work. Stacy is another painter, you guys, and her business is uh, furniture could, if furniture could talk, go give her a follow as well. I'm going to block the camera with my head again because I'm going to center this piece now. And now that I've got it cut off, I can move it and eliminate all that spacing that was in between. So on this one, I've got a, a five word, a five letter word at the top, plant. So that makes it nice and easy because then I can center the placement of this transfer on that A. And I'm going to cut this because it's going to split that A in half. All right, sorry if I'm blocking you guys. I'm looking to make sure it's equidistant from my molding on the sides. Um, I've got my A right in the center. It looks level with the wording above. And then just a light pressing will set it. Okay, now I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and let me bring you guys in a little bit closer on what I'm doing. Okay, and I'm going to cut this. Do you see how it's going to split this A right down the center? If I cut this while it's on this backing, it's going to cut all that A. And then I can do pay attention to these half at a time. Thank you so much. Your beautiful inside. Out. That was really, really, really sweet. Thank you. And now I can just work on these half half a piece at a time, this half and then this half, instead of having one long piece. It looks a little crooked. I think it's uh, the, the angle that you guys are looking at, because when I'm looking at it face on, it looks okay. 
Even if it's a little crooked, guess what? It's on. It's staying. Someone will tell me when I post the final piece, I'm sure. It's always harder doing this stuff on camera. I feel like I have less time to look and pay attention. So hopefully it's close enough. When I look at it on the spacing of the molding, it looks okay. That's what's funny is it's the same spacing here as it is here. So this might be a little, I don't know, whatever. It's staying on guys, it's staying on. Not taking it off, that's for darn sure. So same thing I've done before. I'm pulling my transfer back, paying attention to these little edges as I go, and then rubbing anywhere I see that's wanting to pull back up, I can pay attention to those spots as I go. Now I could pull this up and probably most of it would stick, but by taking a little bit of extra time with it, you get a much better result. Pulling it back too soon is how you end up with some air bubbles under your transfer, especially on the bigger transfer pieces. This one has more small lettering. All right, so I've got half of it on. It's because it's bowed out. That's another good point. That's a good point too. And we're looking at it from an angle. It might be slightly off, but it's not way off. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring you guys in and show you something. Let's talk about the halo. Let's see if we can get a nice view of the halo. Okay, so I've got you down lowered and you can see the halo on my transfer on some of this lettering up here. You can see the halo on it. Now if I take my just my finger alone and I rub each of these letters, Gosh, I really want you guys to see what this does. Let's do the S because that's a good view of the S. Can you see how it's got the halo around it? Yeah, could you could be right, Toy. I'll look at it straight on. I'll have to camouflage that if it is. And I just rub, watch this corner of the S. And I just rub that with my finger that halo virtually disappears. I'm gonna go through each of these individual letters. And this does the same thing as burnishing, but I'm using my finger in this case. I also like to use the Dixie Belle finishing pad for this, but I'm basically just rubbing it down. I'm sealing all of these little edges onto my furniture piece. Cause I can see all these, raised parts are little tiny air bubbles under here. Here's another spot with on the G. Yeah, it's all gone. And then once I put clear coat over this, so this is an important step and it's kind of a pain, but it's one that I would not rush at all. Even if you've got some of the transfers that have little tiny letters in them, by going over and rubbing it all down, it really gets rid of most of that halo. So I'm gonna do that over my whole piece. It is magical. So now that you guys have seen that, let's go ahead and transfer this piece over here. Same thing, I'm gonna rub this down, get myself a nice start. And all I had done was just lightly press it. I think you're right. Shoot, guys, I got a little bit too much spacing there, huh? I was a little cockeyed. Are there colors that show the halo more than others? Yes, great question. Darker colors show the halo more than others because the halo shows up as kind of a white. So when you put that on, for example, black, it's a little bit harder. You have to rub it a little bit better than other colors. Lighter colors, make it easier, darker colors are gonna be harder. Are darker colors just harder for everything? Um, darker colors are harder to top coat. Um, 
Darker colors are harder to blend into light colors like black into white. You know, I had someone ask about navy into white the other day as far as blending. Notice how close in tone these colors are, the, the color I mixed and then the dried sage that I highlighted with. If I make that noise, it won't matter. Yes, you can use a finishing pad. And I'm using my fingers right now, but absolutely, I love the Dixie Belle finishing pad. It probably goes a little bit faster with the finishing pad than it does with my fingers. Pulling my transfer, watching all the edges as I go. Beautiful, but it's got all this white. Let me see if I turn my light down a little bit, if you can see it better. That kind of takes some of the reflection off of it. No, probably, gosh darn it, I'm super mad about that placement. It looks okay when I look at it. It's weird, it looks worse on camera, I think. We'll see when I photograph it, huh? So if you see that in my final photographs, no need to point it out. I'll be kicking myself already. What is the darker color? So the darker color is a custom color mix. I mixed three Dixie Belle paint colors to get it. It is Dixie Belle collard greens, the Gulf, and antebellum blue. Can I hold it? Highlighted with dried sage. So I have four colors on these. These three were mixed to get my darker color and then I highlighted with this lighter color. That's my custom color mix and it's really pretty. I saved it. So I keep a little ledger. Let me show you guys how I do my custom mixes. Now see, when I stand back, it looks okay. That's weird. Maybe, you know when you're up close on something, it looks worse too? Um, what do you suggest if you're going over ridges and you get tracks, cracks in the transfer? Okay, once they're there, there's not a lot you can do. I would go back and I paint them in. If I get a crack, I will go back and paint it in. So I will either, you can take acrylics if you have um, fine art acrylics, or yeah, you could camouflage it with other flowers because you can always layer your transfer. So put another flower over that spot, paint it in with acrylics or with your Dixie Belle paint. Um, there's a lot of things you can do for cracks. Thank you, Stacy. That makes, thank you. If, even if you're just making me feel better. So this is a little ledger book I have. It's just a little art book. And I will put in here when I mix custom colors. So let me turn to the page. This is the one that I just mixed. And I put in here what my mix is. And then when I want to paint in that color again, here's an example. I can mix and then I'll touch it next to. So this is a purple and I did another piece and right down here is where I touched it and that was how close my new mix was. So this tells me I can go, you know, all around it and see how close I am. Oh, no, these need to be lightened up a little bit and this is where I ended up on this one when I had to repaint it. So by putting it in this book, if I need to repaint this color, I'll have a sample here that I can um, get close to. You don't know if you could ever be that organized. I don't know if I could ever be that organized. Okay, so now on this piece of the transfer, I don't want this wording down below. So I'm gonna cut out this flower and the rest of the scroll work from here. So let's cut this portion out. Just a pair of scissors. And like I said, I'm gonna have a whole bunch of this script left. I'll probably get easily two pieces out of this one transfer. Okay, so this is a portion I don't plan to use at all on this piece. Can you see how it's just kind of um, just script? But I want all the scrollies to stay because I think they go nice in this frame. And then I'll have, see this side's done. I'll have the gold work around the frame. This side is not done. Um, what colors did I mix? So my mix again, one more time, is Dixie Belle collard greens, the gold, and... Um, antebellum blue. So now, huh, um, this piece, I need to match it up on both sides. It matches up to the scroll work. So I want to make sure I match it on both sides. And this one, this side needs to come up a little bit. 
So before I press it down, I want to make sure it's matched exactly on both sides where I need to be. That is spot on right there. That can't be crooked. And then just like I did on that last piece, I'm going to come and just slice it right down here. So once I press it, that's enough to hold it in place. Same thing if you're doing a drawer or around a molding. I can um, just press it to hold it in place and then I can slice it wherever I need to slice it. And then I can focus on these just one at a time. So I'm about halfway done. I've got this part at the bottom and then I'll, I'll put another piece with some scroll work down there. Was that scroll work on the middle drawer part of the original piece? Oh, um, no, this is all original. I have not added any moldings to this piece. It's a spectacular piece of furniture. It's just a beautiful piece of furniture. I thought about adding moldings to this, um, but but truth be told, in the end, I my gut was just saying, like, let it just be naturally beautiful. It's just a beautiful piece of furniture. So I'm pulling this back, rubbing as I go. Um, let me show you guys something. Okay, I did get, I did end up taking off a little piece of my scroll and it kind of folded over on the backing. That happens a lot. It's just a mistake. So. There was a little space right here. So my space is just wider than it was intended to be. I could either come back with a little bit of gold paint and paint that in. Um, my gilding waxes, I'm using two on this piece. I'm using, uh, I don't have the lids on them. Hang on, let me grab you the lids. So that has the names. I'm using the Redesign Decor Wax in Eternal. This is their pure gold. And I'm layering it with Art Alchemy Wax, the Art Alchemy Wax in white gold. So eternal and white gold. Why do I have trouble putting on gilding wax? It smashes, it's very, very soft. You need to have a light hand. Um, you know what, Vicki, I'd show you my hardware, but it's actually washed, it's being cleaned right now. It's soaking, I soak my hardware in um, a mix of vinegar, white vinegar and water to clean it. And then I'm probably gonna leave it original. I might put a little gilding wax on it depending on how it cleans up. But like I said, I just wanna keep this piece really classic and original. So it's got their drop poles, little swags there. And then these I think are, oh, it has a little keyhole. There's a little keyhole and some of it's going to cover my transfer, but I don't, I think that's okay. I think it totally goes with the look of the piece. It's got a keyhole on each side of the door and a little knob. All right, let's see if I can start pulling this back. Ideally, I would be on the other side of my piece, but yeah, that's going to pull off. That's fine. So I was going to use the other gold transfer that just came out. Somebody help me with what the name of it is because I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember. The other brand new gold one, but it's got a really, it's got a really pretty frame around it. And I thought it would be pretty if it could fit inside here, but it didn't fit inside there. Joy. Um, Joy is on. Joy, I actually bought this piece from her. She's another local painter. And I've had it for forever. And she said, are you finally painting that piece? Like, yeah, I've only had it for like a year. Nobody snatched it up, so I get to play around with it. Lovely script. Thank you. You guys are awesome. So like I said, this is, this is um, the last part of the second piece. So I've got two pieces that I haven't used. And then I, of course, I cut off this word and I didn't use it. So now we're going to come down to here. 
So I'm gonna see. Here's where I'm iffy. I don't know if this will fit or if I can if I just need to cut out this portion right here. And it still makes sense with this transfer. It still makes sense. Um, oh, it's gonna fit, you guys. Yay, I can use all of it. Uh, because this is a magazine cover, it still makes sense even with the part that I cut out. So I'm very particular about that, making sure that if I cut a portion of a transfer out, for example, with the French ones, who is this lady? Do you like my fake eyelashes, Leah? I can't tell if they make me look pretty or if they make me look like a drag queen. Joy is the sweetest. Joy is amazing. I'm glad to see, um, Joy, that you've been painting again, too. So I'm cutting off. This transfer now has some more script at the bottom, and I'm going to cut that portion off. I don't have enough room for it. So all in all, I will have used about half of this transfer. I know, Leah, I agreed to go live and redesign this month. So let me tell you guys something, whoever's on here listening right now. Um, this has been an insane month. April was insane. Insane. Drag queen for sure. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Ross. <laughs> I don't know. Drag queen's probably still better than my daily look. I'll take it. So I'm going to point my camera down a little bit because I'm working now closer down to the bottom. And this is the portion we're going to fill in with the last part of this transfer. I think it's going to be really pretty and it still makes sense. So I don't like when people cut apart like the French script transfers and they cut off a word that makes the saying not make sense anymore. So you do want to pay attention to that. Some of our customers speak other languages and they know when you've taken off a word. All right now I'm really scared of putting this on crooked guys. Like terrified. All right, I think that's my center. So now if I can just get it straight. So I'm not going to press it just in case I need to move it. And I'm going to sit back. I mean, it looks pretty close to me. And I'm going to go ahead and press it down. And just that light pressing is enough that it's going to hold it in place for me to come. I'm going to go ahead and cut it down this drawer line again, or this drawer right down the center that slices my letters too. the letters that are going to be split right there and gives me a nice clean cut and now we can go ahead and rub the transfer off the backing so um last month i didn't do a lot of lives can i tell you guys something i did 15 pieces of furniture last month 15 pieces of furniture so that's why you didn't see me live a lot last month and the reason is because um, I need the majority of those to go out on a shipment and I had to have them done for my shipper to come next week so now that that's done I can focus on my local pieces and doing a little bit more lives um, but it it I don't know people are home um, and coronavirus made my business go bananas. Plus my kids are home. We're doing homeschool. Um, so I was, on, I was on burnout. I actually took like three days off over the weekend and I really didn't do anything just for that reason. So now I feel like I've rubbed this pretty well. Some tiny letters right there. Let me give them a little extra attention. This is going to be my last piece of this transfer to go on my this furniture piece. I'm trying to watch my comments. Oh, I missed a whole bunch. How's my friend's kitchen? Yeah, great to have me as a friend. Um, everyone's home now and realize they need to redecorate. That is absolutely so true, Brittany. That's exactly what has happened. I thought the opposite might happen. Um, that people would, you know, retreat and, and not want to redecorate. But that is, it, I mean, 
I'm busier right now than I have ever been in all the time I've been painting. I'm super grateful for it. I'm just trying to manage that as best as I can. And I'm hearing that from a lot of painters. So, you know, great for supporting small businesses. We appreciate it. I know it won't last forever. I'm super grateful. Um, I'm glad to see people out there taking on their own projects, trying painting for the first time. So that's been another thing. A lot of people are painting for the first time, which means my messages are going bananas. What's the color? My color, does anybody want remember my color mix? This is a custom color mix of Dixie Bell paint. It is Dixie Bell collard greens, the gulf, and antebellum blue. Those are mixed together and then it's highlighted with dried sage. I rarely use a pure white for a highlight. You guys may notice that too. I will use either a cream or a beige or an off-white, but I rarely highlight with pure white because I don't want it to look like a white bubble in the middle. I want it to look like a lighter color of my paint color. So I usually will pull from whatever the you know, the base of my paint color is. If it's a warm color, I'll choose beige. If it's a gray, I choose a gray. Oh my gosh, that couldn't be a more perfect fit for my furniture piece. Hi, Ann. You shipped out a ton of products. Good, Toy. Good. I'm so glad to hear that because I know a lot of our retailers are closed right now. So I'm glad to hear that people are still shopping on Etsy and um, you guys are seeing that business too because I don't have an Etsy shop or anything. Um, well, I do have an Etsy shop, although I never, I rarely use it. Um, most of my stuff is sold through my social media pages. So I'm glad to know that that's trickling down to you guys too. We got a great new release of transfers. Um, some really pretty designs in there. Like I said, I had two options I was considering for this piece. Another one that would be really pretty is Beauty of Life, which is a black. Um, it's very similar to this, but it's it's a black script. And that would have been a pretty option for this too, but I think that was too big as well. So this is perfect because I'm able to cut it up and just use the portions that I want to use to make it fit right inside this frame. You'd love to see my highlight. Marlene, I have a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton videos on my YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and search Brushed by Brandy. And my videos are all labeled, but anything that has the word blending in it, um, that's what you'll see. Exactly what I did here. I probably spent a little more time on it because it's only a two color blend, so I feel like I needed to get it better. And then again, like I showed you guys over here, I've done some waxes, that top drawer over there, I've done some waxes to deepen the paint colors. And over here, I have not. This is just the paint. So you can kind of see that adding that, the waxes deepens. Does that help? Yeah, 100 YouTube videos on just that. I know. And still, you know, what's funny is I, I watch the pages and still it seems like that's one of the techniques that people still want to walk, learn the most. So, you know, we'll keep doing them until you guys feel confident in it. Because um, there's still a lot of demand for more blending videos. So this one I did not do on camera because I'm doing the transfer on camera, the paint for this piece. I needed to get it ready for this live. So I went ahead and did the paint off camera. Um, on my Dixie Bell live, which is Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm live on the Dixie Bell page. I'm either gonna do some layering or a burlap texture technique. Will I put any transfers on the drawers? I'm just gonna leave the drawers. I'm just gonna leave them. I think once I put the gold hardware and then I've got all you know my moldings highlighted as I've done on that side, I just think the hardware on the sides is gonna be enough. And this will be my, you counted 102. I hope you guys are not counting those videos. So I love this. I love this transfer on the center here. So again, I need to come over this and rub all these letters down to get that little halo off. All these letters I will go over with my finger. 
And someone asked about the Dixie Belle finishing pad. Let me show you guys what that is. I use these a lot. So it's this little white sponge. They're only a couple dollars, maybe. This one, you can see I've used it before. And I cut them up into bits. So this is like an eighth. You vote for the burlap technique, Teresa. And I will use this to rub over the transfer. So this is just in place of doing it all with my finger. The only thing is you want to be careful when you're rubbing with this because with my finger, I can feel if it starts getting sticky and wants to pull back. This, I don't have any feeling with it. So I have to just pay close attention with my eyes that I'm not pulling back any parts that weren't well attached. This is where those two scrolls met up and I kind of want to make sure that those a little piece where it overlapped right there. I'm gonna, just a little gummy piece of glue I pulled off. It will make a little white haze, like a sanding haze around my letters, but once I clear coat, that will go away. You guys are all for the burlap. The only thing with the burlap is I don't have a piece for it. It would have to be on a sample door. I have plenty of those. Good old Habitat for Humanity. All right, so that's how I'm gonna finish this piece up. So let me pull you guys back. And you can see, I think it's beautiful. I think my letters are a little bit crooked, which is kind of a bummer, but I can't really do anything about it now unless I was to take this whole thing off, which is an option, but then I've gotta, I don't know, touch up my paint and stuff. It's probably not worth it. Probably not worth it. If I did, you know, I'm just going over this, so if you ever want to fix it, how I would fix it to take this off, I would scrub it with steel wool and mineral spirits. We'll take it off. Um, you may have to fix the paint. It can disrupt your paint a little bit. So that's, and then I could just take another piece of the script, you know, something from on here, and I would just replace that section so it looked still filled in with something. That's how I would fix it if I was going to. I don't know, I'll see if it bothers me or not as I'm going through. Um, as I stand back, I might photograph it and look at how it shows up in a photograph and um, see what it looks like when I'm centered on it. I think it looks great. Thank you. So anyway, that was, this is the piece that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to finish up all the waxes and gilding waxes. All this is done. All this shading is done with waxes around here. And then I'm going to need to clear coat it and finish um, staining the top. I've got a wood stain top up here. Looks like the, t I think this top row is crooked. I actually think it's this one. I think it's this one that's a little bit off. This one looks fine. Because if you notice, this is equidistant from this molding as that piece is. So I think this top one is fine. I think it's this. You would leave it. I'll see if you'll know if, if I post final photos and I've got those words taken off and, and in place of it, you know, it could say, I'm looking at the script and what it says, Botanical Magazine, um, other botanical establishments in Great Britain. I mean, I could put any kind of wording in there and it would it would make sense. Did I use black wax or grunge? I used um, black gilding wax and black vesting wax is what I'm using. Combination of those two. The grunge gray is a little too light. It doesn't show up on the color. I know, we see flaws and no one else sees them, but if it bothers me, then... I will fix it. Um, I don't know how I would hide it. I would take it off. I would take it off if it bothers me. I would just take this off and um, and replace it with some of the other, you know, whatever script I want to put on there. I've got some left over. So I'm bummed about that. But that's what I get for not paying close enough attention when I was laying it and doing it on camera. Um, Anna, you're welcome. I always try to respond to my messages. I'm getting slower and slower at it, and my message, my answers are getting shorter and shorter, but I still try. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for popping on with me today. I'm going to finish this piece up. I'll have pictures of it posted probably next week because I have a lot of pieces to post this week already, so probably next week look for this one. Um, go to redesignwithprima.com, and you can find a retailer that carries these new transfers. This one's called Flower Collector. Flower Collector is the name of this. Um, and there's a whole collection of 10 transfers that just came out and they're beautiful. Um, so anyway, um, my link is above is uh, my link for Dixie Belle Paint too. If you guys want to order these colors, my colors again were 
um, collard greens, the gulf in antebellum blue, and then I shaded with uh, um, dried sage. Just put a flower there. There you go. Just put a flower there. Um, so anyway, guys, thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you uh, for watching, and um, I will catch you guys later. I'll be live Thursday on the Dixie Belt page.